Konnichiwa, hajime mashite, watashi no namae wa ni kori desu. Dozo yorishiku. Hi! <laughs> How do you do? My name is Nicole. Nice to meet you. That's basically what I just said in Japanese. And I know what else you're thinking is, what the hell? The black girl knows Japanese. <laughs> Before you go all haywire, I don't know Japanese fluently. Um, I'm a beginner in Japanese and that's basically the reason why I'm coming to you today, why I'm coming at you guys with a video <laughs> blog. That sneezing was my dog if you heard that. Um, I just wanted to start this basically to get in touch with other people who have an interest in learning Japanese, also to help teach other people um, Japanese and to learn from those who know more Japanese than myself and especially from native speakers. Native speakers are always welcome here to help teach me more about Japanese and other people who um, have drifted or wandered here. Come here doggy. My dog is growling. He doesn't like that I'm not paying attention to him. Um, uh, well he doesn't want to come here so we're just gonna ignore him and you're just gonna hear some growling in the background. Come here. Come on. No, he doesn't want to come here. He's just like, one second. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> that was more like a couple seconds there, two, three, four, five seconds, because he didn't want to come to me at first. But this is my little doggy. I didn't expect for him to be in the first video, but he's in here. Um, but like what, like I was saying, again, I I welcome everybody here from people who have no idea how to speak Japanese all the way to native speakers. I just want this to be kind of a place where everybody who has an interest in speaking Japanese can come and learn a little something and share a little something with everybody else. Um, I guess today all I want to do or talk about basically in this video is maybe some of the struggles that I've had. Um, with learning Japanese, maybe some of you who are beginners um, have had the same struggles and maybe some of you who are learning Japanese can have a heads up on some of the obstacles that are to come with speaking Japanese. Um, the first thing I would have to say that was an obstacle for me, and not a big obstacle, just a slight obstacle, just because of the conditioning of speaking English, was the vowel sounds, you know, the A, E, I, O, U. In Japanese, they are pronounced A, E, U, E, O because the E is pronounced like A and the I is pronounced like E, very much like in Spanish, exactly like in Spanish, actually. So if you know Spanish, you know your vowel sounds in Japanese. Um, so sometimes when I see an A, I want to say, I want to pronounce it A. And when I see the letter E, I want to pronounce it E even though I know that's not the right way. So that's probably a little obstacle that you might face being an English speaker. Um, the second obstacle um, also has to do with pronunciation and that would have to be with the double vowels and the double consonants. Not so much double vowels as the double consonants. Uh, the double vowels are really easy. You just like elongate or double enunciate the vowel like in obasan and obasan. Uh, one means aunt, one means grandmother. <laughs> and without you holding out that, that A, it means, ah, sorry, I'm getting attacked by my dog. One means aunt, of course, and another one means grandmother just from holding out the A sound or shortening the A sound, just making it oba and oba. Okay, um, and then the consonants. The consonants I still can't do. I'll try, uh, I, I guess an example could be the difference between um, kite and kite. So kite is, uh, it means to come. And mine's out of the gutter on that one. Okay, I'm just I'm gonna catch that one right now. <laughs> But it's, uh, I think it comes from uh, kuru. Yes, exactly. See, my Japanese, I still have to really think about it. But um, kite is the te form of kuru, which means to come, like come here or to come over. Um, and then there's kite. Oh, I sound, that sounded weird. Okay, <clears throat> let me do that again. Kite. 
There's a pause in between the T's. It's spelled K-I-T-T-E, kite. Um, and that word means stamps. <laughs> now, I don't want you to ever start speaking Japanese and then being like, you can stamps to my house. People will be like, what? You really need to say come. So kite and kite are two different things. Um, also, what else have I had trouble on as far as like Japanese goes? Uh, sentence structure. Yeah. Oh my God. Sentence structure. Um, in English, we usually do, I think it's a uh, subject, verb, object. Um, and in Japanese, it's subject, object, verb. So like, for example, in English, I would say, uh, I hold the dog right here, or I have a dog. And in Japanese, it would be, I dog have, okay? So that's something we have to learn in, uh, in, in Japanese and English, getting those sentence structures right and putting those verbs at the end of the sentence and yada, yada, yada. We'll learn again more about that if I keep posting videos. Another thing that definitely kicked my behind <laughs> in Japanese is particles. Oh my God, especially wa and ga. I will definitely, if I keep doing videos, will do a video specifically on wa and ga. I've had foreign uh, people, or not foreign people, I have had native speakers explain the difference of Wanga to me and even they seem like they don't know what the hell they're talking about so that's cool um but i have researched and researched i've come up with my own concepts and my own understanding of how it's easier for us you know foreign people or uh what do they call us guy jeans but i don't want to say that because i feel like that's really derogatory but uh uh, gai, ko, gai kokuchi is what it is, gai kokuchi. Uh, for us foreigners, it tends to be a little uh, hairy, that wa and ga stuff. So again, like I said, I'll do another video about that. Um, another thing is verbs. Right now, I've been really concentrating a lot on, um, on my verbs. I am really good with like the moss forms. I'm barely starting to learn te forms. Um, I've learned my show. My show is really easy. Um, like saying something like, Nani o tabi ka? Like, what shall we eat? That's something easy because the ma show kind of just means like you're suggesting something. But other, you know, conjugations of verbs can be a little bit difficult to understand. And also, when you're looking up words, depending on what kind of dictionary you're using, Sometimes you have to know the dictionary form of the word um, before you go looking it up in a dictionary. Um, but again, we'll talk about that kind of stuff later. And then um, this one's not really a problem as much as it is a tip. I guess you can call it both. Um, as an English speaker, I guess I want to be lazy and just think of a phrase in English and say it in Japanese. Not saying that that technique does not work. I mean, you could translate an English sentence right into Japanese. However, you have to learn cultural things. Um, there's ways to say things in English, just like there's ways to say things in Japanese. Um, so I guess like an example would be onaka ga suiteimasu, which of course, sorry for all you native speakers out there that are like, oh my God, she's like using such a polite, polite dictionary form. I, I am using a very textbook sentence just because, I mean, for us foreign speakers, we do need to know that form before we can start speaking, you know, in the more casual sense. But onaka ga suiteimasu. Um, if you look at that, it will say that that's how you say I'm hungry in Japanese, but there's no word in that sentence that means I am. Um, suite mas can mean hungry, but if you really break the sentence down, onaka actually means stomach or tummy, um, or belly. 
In English, I would never say my belly is hungry or my belly is less empty, which is what suitemas means. Suitemas can mean less full, transparent, or to be hungry. Um, but again, like I said, in English, I would be wanting to say something like watashi wa suite, even though that probably makes no sense. But that's what I'm saying. We want to take the direct words and translate them directly. And it's not that easy. Uh, so just little things like that, just trying to get out of that mode of wanting to translate directly from English to um, Japanese. We want to actually learn the cultural um, phrases that can be used. So I don't want this video to be any longer than it already is. Uh, so we will definitely touch more on different subjects in Japanese and probably more on what I've already just discussed in uh, later videos. So uh, I guess we can say sayonara.